Good morning, everyone. Welcome to TAM Lab number 40. Uh, today, I'm going to be going through basically kind of a high level overview and a deep dive. Well, it's, is there a high level or is it a deep dive? I'm not sure. So we'll, we'll figure that out as we go here. But basically, we'll be jumping into uh, a VMware Fling, which is called HCI Bench. And, and it's all around performance benchmark testing, uh, specifically geared towards vSAN or HCI in general, but you can also use it for traditional uh, data stores like VMFS, things like that, right? So uh, that's what we'll be jumping into. So let me close out of the PowerPoint and let me jump right into the content. So let me give you a little bit of background on why I'm doing this and um, why I have any knowledge around it, I guess. So I have a customer um, and they just deployed a two node robo vSAN configuration. So they have a remote site and they deployed two vSAN ready nodes and they, had, they have a vSAN witness host running in their primary data center and it's a perfect robo solution, right? So that configuration basically is exactly what my home lab is. I have two physical hosts and uh, those are directly connected with a 10 gig link and it's, it's running vSAN, right? And then in my other cluster, I have my vSAN witness node, which is this guy right here. So it basically simulates their configuration and setup pretty much exactly, except the hardware is different, right? But, but overall, it's, it's pretty much the same. So as we went and deployed this new solution for them and we configured it and we got everything ready to go, um, the last step is we wanted to do just some benchmark performance testing, right? So just kind of a, a final validation and make sure that we're getting some numbers that we would expect to see. So um, working with with the my vSAN SE that helps cover this account, um, he definitely recommended this this fling called HCI Bench, which is if you just Google VMware flings or VMware HCI Bench, it'll take you to the fling site. You can click on that, and it will take you here, where basically uh, it's going to tell you a summary of what it is, kind of some of the requirements. Uh, it has a good instruction manual that you can download. And then, you know, also comments you can you can provide feedback, right? So if you're not familiar with flings, these are usually um, little projects that we do internally. And then we provide them to the public community to, to leverage, but they are not officially supported. Um, a lot of times though, they do become actual products or features within products. So um, it, it's kind of a good way for, it, for us to kind of test the market and make sure it, it works as expected and we get you know, good feedback around it. So um, when you come here, you can download the OVA. Uh, make sure you accept the EULA. Um, you can download the OVA and the user guide, which I definitely recommend. So, so that's the tool we're using to essentially test out the vSAN config and make sure that it, it looks appropriate before we start putting production workloads in there, right? Um, in the past, I've used things like iometer or iometer, however you want to say it. That's, I haven't used that in years, um, but it's similar to that where you can specify um, a lot of parameters around IO testing specifically for storage, like your block size, number of threads, uh, things like that, right? So you can essentially do some baseline testing, right? So that's what HCI Bench is all about. So with that, let me, uh, actually, let me go back to here and just kind of give you a brief overview of, of what this solution looks like. So this, it's hard to see here, but this is a, in this square here, um, this represents the actual HCI Bench appliance, right? Which we'll be deploying here. I already have one in my lab and uh, I'll show you what that process looks like. But basically it has a web user interface and you will log into that and configure both workload files and there's some out of the box that you can leverage and also the config file, which is basically specifying your environment parameters like vCenter, credentials, uh, data stores, things like that, right? Those get rolled up into an automation bundle and passed over to the Ruby vSphere console. Um, the appliance itself includes the guest VM template that it's going to deploy, and these are Photon OS templates. So what it's gonna do when you say, right, or start testing, it's gonna deploy a number of guest VMs, which are Photon OS, 
and it's going to have the automation bundle included and all the configuration and everything it needs to start doing its testing, right? So it's going to deploy it to your vSphere environment, and then those guest VMs are going to start running through the, the parameters that we specified, right? And then it's going to pass all those testing results back to the HCI bench appliance, and then it'll you can see the results in the web user interface. So that's it from a high level, right? So with that in mind, let's go through the quick process to deploy it. It's, it's very, very straightforward. It's an OVA that there are one or two things you need to keep in mind as you deploy it. So basically you're gonna come into your cluster, you're going to deploy an OVF template, you'll point it to the OVA, and I'm actually gonna click finish when we get to the end because I already have one deployed, but um, I'll show you the process here. So we'll click next, give it a name, I'll call it two. Pick the folder you want to put it in. Which cluster do you want to deploy it to or host? All right. So review the details. Everything looks good. Click next. Uh, accept the license agreements. Click next. Uh, where do you want the VM to be stored? This is not, doesn't have to be the same data store that you want to test. In my case, I've only got the vSAN data store, and it's fine to do that because the HCI bench appliance really isn't doing much while the tests are running. It's those VMs that it deploys, right? So it should be okay. Uh, and then this is the, the one piece where you kind of need to think through. So there are two NICs on this HCI bench appliance. There's a management network and a VM network. So the management network is there because you want the HCI bench VM to be able to talk to your hosts, to your vCenter, right? All those management things. Uh, also, this is where you will be logging into the web user interface. So this is, this is the IP where you'll be hitting it and it's gonna be able to talk to all the other uh, hosts and vCenters and things like that. The VM network is the network that it's going to leverage to communicate with the VMs that it deploys. And it can, in some cases, uh, in fact, in my case, I just use the same network for both, which is totally fine. Um, but if you're gonna deploy these test VMs onto some other network, um, then you will need to configure the appliance to also be on the network so it can get the data back from those VMs, right? So pretty straightforward. Um, and then you just specify your network settings. It can use DHCP. And if, if you are using DHCP, just leave all these things blank on the top and just give it a, a root password. Uh, otherwise, if you're doing static, you can, uh, you can put all those parameters in yourself. Um, I don't think you necessarily need to have DNS A records set up for this. You can just hit the IP, right? It, it's not gonna fail to deploy or anything like that. I did set up DNS just cause I always do. Uh, and that's it, right? You would go to the next page after you put in your password. Next, and then finish. I'm not gonna do it. I have already got it deployed. We've all seen an OVA get deployed, so it's pretty straightforward. So um, once it's deployed, sorry. Quick Steve, well, yeah, what, how big is that VM that just got deployed then? Yeah, good question. So if we go to the documentation here, there is, I'm already on the page even. So oh, cool. Here's the VM itself, the HCI bench, eight vCPU and eight gigs of RAM, and then a bunch of uh, you know, components within it, and then the, the disk size here. So eight and eight, which if we click on it, you can validate that here, eight and eight. And then all the guest VMs that it deploys to actually do this IO testing work are four CPU and eight gigs. Okay, cool. So these are the four that already got deployed. You can see those here. And then the number of hard drives that are attached to these worker nodes is dependent upon the configuration that you pass in the, in the test parameters. So we can see that here in a minute. Um, the documentation, by the way, is, is pretty good. So be sure to download that and it walks through all these things that we just did as far as the deployment of the OVA and it explains you know, those two different networks and, and what the purpose of each one is. So be sure to check that out. So once it's deployed, basically you log into um, the URL, which is the DNS name or the IP uh, on port 8443. So if we jump over to that, um, it will ask you to log in. It'll have a little pop-up. So it's root and whatever password you set, right? 
And this is it. This is essentially what it looks like. If you click on this up here, it's going to take you to that fling page. So um, because it doesn't take you back to like the home page of this appliance. So just be aware of that. But basically you click on configuration here and you start filling in these fields. So you are going to put in your vCenter host name, right? Uh, what credentials you want to use, password. Um, and then you're going to pass it some parameters as far as where you want these VMs to be deployed, right? So here's your data center name. This all aligns with, here's my data center, here's my cluster. This is my vSAN data store. I gotta figure out what that alert is. So data center name, cluster name. You can also specify a resource pool if you wanted to do that, but it's completely optional. What folder do you want the VMs to to live in once they're deployed. So it creates a folder, a subfolder, and that's where they are, right? That's where they exist. Uh, what network do you want to use? And this is essentially the VM network that we saw when we deployed the appliance, right? Um, and then you have an option here. If you don't have DHCP on that network, you can specify the first two octets that it can leverage, right? And this is just for communication between the VMs themselves and the HCI bench appliance. So it's certainly easier if you do have DHCP just to leverage that, but if not, you can kind of get around it with, uh, with some of these additional options here. Then you want to specify your data store names uh, and it doesn't have to be just one. You can put in multiple data stores and that's going to kind of dictate how many VMs get deployed because um, they'll basically need to be mapped to data stores, right? So I just have the one. Um, if you wanted to test a specific storage policy, because that will impact performance potentially, you can certainly do that here. You can, you know, if you're testing out like, oh, let's create a different storage policy for like my, my SQL databases. It's got more threads. It's got more copies. Um, you can test out what that performance looks like versus the default storage policy, right? I only have the default storage policy, so I just left it blank. And if you don't, if you don't put something in, it's always going to use the default. So keep that in mind. This option here is going to basically um, clear the read-write cache before it does each test. And if you're familiar with vSAN, basically what that means is if you look at the way the disks are configured in vSAN, let me show you here. Each, um, I'm going to blank on what it's called. We've got our disks, disk group. Each disk group has its has one and only one SSD that's designated for the caching tier, right? So basically this option is going to flush that, uh, which you may want to do if you want to get kind of a, a representation of brand new uh, data being written, right? Um, in order to do that, you need to have SSH turned on on all of your hosts and they all have to have the same credentials. So I would you know, typically just use root and whatever password, and then it will log in SSH to your host and flush that before it does each test. So it's an option, right? You can also specify which hosts you wanna to deploy to if you don't just wanna put in the cluster name. So um, I just left it as any host in the cluster, right? Or all of them. And then that's it as far as some of the basic configuration. So going down below then, you have some options as far as how, how detailed you wanna be when you create this test scenario, right? So this is where in my mind, it kind of goes back to iometer or iometer where you can get very granular as far as how many, how many threads, uh, what's your, uh, What's your block size? You know what I mean? Uh, is it sequential data? How much percentage read, percentage write? All those sorts of things, right? If you don't care and you don't wanna get into that, just leave it as easy run. And there are four different workload profiles that you can choose from, right? So here's your block size, 4K. 70% is gonna be read and then 100% random writes. It's not gonna be sequential. So, and then if you're wondering, well, what do each of these kind of represent? If you go back to the documentation and find that section here, here are those four 
different use cases, right? So the top one here, actually, let me move this over, is going to basically be the most um, generic common workload representation of VMs, right? So that's the one I did, just because you're going to have domain controllers, you're going to have SQL servers, you're going to have all kinds of different workloads, right? So that's that's just kind of a common representation. The second one is going to basically show you the most the best realistic IO per second that you could possibly get. Um, and that's basically IOPS, right? The third option would simulate more of like a database workload. So online transaction, well, I forget what OLTP stands for, right? But basically it's, it's very transactional databases. That's what I would think of. And then the last option is gonna basically show you the most realistic throughput you could possibly get because it's all sequential writes. So if you're looking to figure out what's the theoretical best case scenario as far as throughput, run the bottom one. If you're looking at what's the most IOPS I could possibly get, run the second one. But if you just want a basic test, I would recommend the first one because it's kind of a common workload. If you have a specific cluster just for databases, then definitely run the third one. And that keeps it simple. You don't have to go through all those different parameters, right? Now, I would, I would say, I would echo or, or highlight the importance of that doc that you just popped up there, especially what we just talked about, because what I've seen with customers evaluating vSAN, for example, um, they run these tests, but they don't really know what it means, right? Um, and of course, given the right, the right test, you know, you're gonna make any environment look amazing, um, right? So to have this kind of split out that explains why you would pick this to simulate the most common workloads um, or simulate OLTP or things of that nature, it's, that's huge, right? That's, your customer will understand the same test on the other environments too. And you can really like actually understand how they're different or how they're successful. So this is, this is great. Like screenshot this thing, you know, save it in one note or something like that. Just, yeah. That's great to see. For sure. Uh, and then one final thing I'll add on this page here is you have the option of using either FIO or VD bench, uh, which is the underlying engine engine that's performing these tests. So, VD Bench is an Oracle open source tool, um, which means that you can download it, you can use it on your own. But as part of their uh, end user agreement or licensing distribution, I don't know what you want to call it, we can't bundle that with the product. So you can use it, but you have to, whoops, you have to basically, let's say if I select VD Bench, I would have to download it and then I'd have to upload it because we can't package it with our distribution. Um, I used FIO and I have links to these here. I forget what FIO stands for, flexible IO tester. So this is just kind of another open source one. This one is actually bundled with HCI bench. So you can absolutely leverage this out of the box without any other configuration, which is what I did. So that's it. And then you save your config. Uh, let me put in my password here. I'm gonna turn off flushing the read write cache. I'm actually gonna run it here. But you would save it, finished. You would validate it. Um, we should have a pop-up here. Huh, I wonder if I need to refresh. But normally the validate will then, here, yeah, it does this. It does it validate the config. So it's just gonna test all those parameters we put in there and make sure that uh, Everything is legit before we actually start the test. And it also tests the, uh, the networking as well. So while that's doing its configuration or its validation, uh, I would do want to show this. So if you go back into vSAN and you go to monitor, there are some proactive tests bundled with vSAN. And these are great for configuration validation, but it's not going to tell you anything as far as performance validation. So basically this, there's two of them here. There's a VM creation test and a network performance test. So if you click the little I here to give you some info, basically it's just going to confirm that it can create VMs within this vSAN cluster and, and uh, sure that and delete it and probably move it around, make sure both hosts can see it, that sort of thing. So let's actually run it. So you should do this, but just keep in mind, it's really only gonna validate the config and not 
you know, any kind of performance benchmarking. So you could still have horrible performance, <laughs> even though you've passed these both these tests, right? The network test is basically in a test um, that both hosts or all hosts in the cluster can communicate with one another and the bandwidth is sufficient for, you know, kind of bare minimum of, of what you would do with vSAN. So definitely run those, but don't stop there. I feel like you would definitely want to run a performance benchmark test uh, with HCI Bench. And then one other thing to add is when I ran this, and I'll show you the results here in a bit, and, I, and we can't actually run it on the fly because it took almost two hours to run uh, start to finish. So I'll show you the results and uh, we'll kick it off here before and you can kind of see what it looks like when it starts. Um, but as it was running, it was absolutely hammering the storage. So I would caution you do not run this on a production uh, environment, right? It's going to definitely impact all your other running workloads from a noisy neighbor perspective. So it's great to run right after the initial config before you start putting production workloads on there. So just keep that in mind. So we'll let that finish. Uh, this is still validating. Okay, perfect. So it'll give you some info as far as, you know, making sure everything validated properly. Once that's done, you just click start test and it's going to number one, deploy the, the number of VMs that you need. And if you choose the easy easy run option here, you don't have to dictate that. It's gonna, it's gonna think to itself, okay, I need four VMs based on this workload uh, specification, right? So in fact, that's what it did in my environment. It deployed these four VMs. And then the first step before it actually starts running the performance test is it's going to prep the disks that are associated with each of these. And I think, where does it talk about that? Uh, well, actually we can see it here. If you don't use the easy run option, you can specify, yeah, the prepping of the virtual disks. Um, if you have dedupe and compression turned on, you'll want to use random because that way it will essentially write to every block on those VMDKs. And the reason it does that is because then as it's actually running the test, you don't get performance impacts from the first write hit, right? So it, it's going to have to initialize that bit and then write data to it, right? Which is why if you deploy like a highly transactional VM in your environment, you want to use a thick disk with an eager zero because then it takes away all that potential impact to performance when it's writing new data, right? If you're not using dedupe and compression, you can use zero. Or if you don't want to even think about all that, again, just run the easy run option and it'll do it all for you. But after it deployed those four VMs and it was prepping the disks, it had a major impact to performance. So I was able to see it in VROPS actually, and it took a while just to prep the disks. So I'll pull up what happened here, but I saw some major write latency because in my lab, I've got basically consumer grade flash drives, right? And the, the caching tier needs to be high performance and it's anything but high performance. So it was, there was some extreme latency that I saw. So if we go into troubleshoot vSAN, uh, here you can see, I ran the test on the 4th of November, which was Monday. And this is my write latency. And it spiked to 31,000 milliseconds, which is just miserable. I mean, you don't want to see typically over like 20 milliseconds, right? And this is 31,000, so it was pretty bad. Um, but once it was done with prepping the disks, this all this yellow here, which is hard to see, is the actual um, running of the tests, which you can see the value is like 13, right, 11. So it, it, it was higher than normal, where typically I see sub one millisecond latency, but it certainly wasn't 35,000, right? Um, but the other cool thing is there should be an IOPS on here somewhere, and maybe it's just here, maybe? No, here's IOPS. So if we look at that time period, we'll do the last seven days. This is when it basically ran it. 
I hit 40,000 IOPS in my home lab, which is pretty crazy, right? And this was during the test. This was during the, the prepping of the disks. So I hit like 25,000 IOPS, which is pretty good. But again, that latency was awful. So um, interesting to see it right through VROPS. So pretty cool. Um, all right, I think that's it as far as deployment, configuration, starting the test. Uh, the next thing we'd wanna do is jump into the results. Uh, before I do that though, I wanna show you one other cool thing and it all comes back to support. So if you have ever heard of vSAN, I think it's vSAN Insights is what they call it. Uh, basically, if you have in your vCenter the Customer Experience Improvement Program turned on, CEIP. Oh, that's interesting. That's an old vCenter. Anyway, if you have this turned on and you have vSAN in your environment, then all of your vSAN performance data is being sent up to VMware for analysis. So I'm gonna open up vSAN Insights. I think that's what it's called. Oops. Um, this is something you're only gonna be able to do internally at VMware, right? This is something we've announced to customers. Uh, there's some videos out there that kind of show it, but it's not available for everyone. This is more for support, right? So basically, if I'm internal to VMware and I'm support and I have a customer call me and they've got performance issues with vCenter, I can come here and I can put in their vCenter UUID and I'm gonna pull up all kinds of metrics around their vSAN environment. So to get the vSAN or the vCenter UUID, if you go to your vCenter, and then the MOB, uh, normally you'd have to log in. I did this just before, just to kind of prep, but you log in with credentials. And if you go to content and then about, this is the UUID that you need to send to support. Once they have that, they can put that in and let this load up. And now here's all kinds of information around my vSAN my cluster in my home lab, right? So here you can see the cluster itself. These are the hosts. Um, all of the data, like the names and everything has been, um, uh, what's the word you want to use? I guess it's like generic, it's, it's anonymized. anonymized. Yes, thank you. Um, so it's not gonna show me VM names, it's not gonna show me cluster name, host name, anything like that, which is good. Um, so rest easy if you're a customer watching this, uh, but it is good because it, it will make troubleshooting your environment much faster when you do need help from support. So here you can see how many VMs I have, what version of vCenter I have, how many hosts and their hardware configuration. Um, it will give you some high information, high level information around um, the vSAN environment itself. So I've got two disk groups and all the disks are at version 10. Here's the total disk space. Here's how much I'm using. Here's my dedupe ratio, how many total objects, and then all of their components, right? And then if we go through these, we can see uh, performance. If we launch this, it's gonna open up uh, Grafana and have a whole bunch of performance metrics. I won't get into that yet. Here's the vSAN config. So it talks, is, is iSCSI enabled? Are we using encryption? Is it dedupe and compression? Uh, it's using unicast instead of multicast. Right, so really good info. And then it also has an overall health. So this is equivalent to, if you look at vCenter and you go to monitor health, that's all these tests here, right? So we can see that on, a, on the VMware side, which is good. Um, History, this is interesting. So it shows any changes in the last seven days, which is cool. So maybe you can correlate that to all of a sudden we're getting terrible performance. Uh, well, what changed? Something changed here, right? Here it talks about your capacity. This breaks down all of your disks. And if you notice the names of these are anonymized, right? But it does show the number of disks. These are the disk groups. Uh, again, the custody which is used if you include the hosts and the vSAN info, it'll show the version, break it down by host. You can see I've got 
four disks in each disk group. One is caching drive, which is 250 gigs, and then three capacity drives, right? These are all SSD. Uh, and then it shows you your VMs, which is pretty cool. Again, these will be anonymized. So I won't know what's what necessarily, um, but pretty cool. And then, you know, the networking, it'll talk about the VM kernel ports and all that stuff. So if I go down into the host itself, I can see the, the physical next, the VM kernel adapters, um, the networking, this is interesting. So DNS config, it doesn't show the DNS specifics. This is all anonymized. But what you can do is compare that with the other hosts in the cluster, which they should all be the same, right? So it's a, a nice way to kind of validate that things are consistent. Uh, it'll show you all the VIBs on the host, which is pretty powerful. And then um, all the hardware health as far as uh, the components. And then again, the VMs, which, uh, which will break down to you know, all the, the objects within the disk or within the VMs. So, so that's cool. That's, that's really great for troubleshooting um, in a more tactical manner, I guess, right? So if you call in for support and you've got performance issues, support should be able to leverage this information to help expedite the, the you know, fixing your environment. Uh, but again, you have to have the CEIP turned on on your vCenter. So I just wanted to show that because it is a really cool um, feature that a lot of people don't realize um, is available from a support perspective. So there's a couple uh, questions in the Q&A. Is there a performance overhead by sending this data using CEIP? I would have to investigate that. Um, as far as I know, I don't think so. I mean, of course, there's got to be a little bit, right, as it gathers the data and, and sends it off. But I think if you have in your vSAN config, uh, maybe it's under monitor under performance no performance diagnostics no i think maybe it is under configure basically there is a performance yeah the performance service if you have this turned on already you know all of this data is available on prem so it's already doing all that anyways so it's, it now it just has to send the data up to vmware so i would imagine it's, it's negligible um, but I could follow up on that if you want, Francisco. Next question, vSAN Insight. That is up on your screen, uh, your lab or a customer example. So that was my lab that I was showing. Um, all that data, right? So all you need is a UUID for the vCenter and you can pull up, you know, any, any vSAN environment, right? And it's geared for support, right? And I think you even have to go through some internal training around the EULA to make sure that um, you know you understand how to use this data, it's just for support. We're not using it for sales purposes, things like that, right? So, um, and then Francisco asks, "What's the frequency?" I'm assuming you mean how often is this data sent up to VMware? Um, I'm not sure. Let me see. There might be a way to see. So there's a point in time option here. I'd have to look. I, I know there is some information regarding vSAN Insight on Storage Hub. If you've ever gone to this website, this is one of our microsites. So storagehub.vmware.com. And then we'll do Insight. Oh, let's try that again. vSAN Insight. Yeah, so here's Support Insight. That's what it's called, vSAN Support Insight. Um, they may have a little bit more information as far as um, how often it's sent, you know, all that stuff. They even have a video demonstration, which, which will give you kind of a high level overview of uh, the solution. So check that out. I think it's once every four hours. Is it? Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure. I was hoping I would be able to see it here in the data. I thought these points of time would show me. Uh, the performance, by the way, let me see if I can pull this up. If you actually open full performance service graphs, yeah, so here's, this is my environment, right? And it's all graph-based, uh, which is an open open source um, monitoring tool, I guess. 
So here I can see that. And all these things I could see through VROPs as well, of course, right? But this is great because it's available for the support teams when they need to troubleshoot something. So anyway, uh, enough about vSAN support insight. Let me jump back to HCI Bench. So where am I? Here we go. So once you run the test, um, it'll have a little pop-up showing kind of what it's doing. And we'll do that here in a bit. Uh, and then it'll also have a little link that you can click on, which will take you over to another interface on the HCI bench, which is port 3000, which is for Grafana. So it has a out of the box dashboard for FIO monitoring. So when you click on that, it's gonna show you real time what the performance looks like as it's running the test, right? And this is the last hour and you can have it refresh every 10 seconds. So I ran this on Monday. So let's do that. And we'll apply. So here you can see, uh, if you actually look at the data here, I actually ran two different tests. This doesn't capture data when it's preparing the disks because that's all before the, the actual performance test. So that's why I was able to see that in VROPS, but not here because it wasn't actually collecting the data at that time. So I ran this test twice, which is why you see two different, uh, I guess, data sets here, right? So the cool thing about Grafana here is you can zoom in just like in VROPS. And now we have actual performance data from that test. So I hit 16,000 IOPS. My throughput was about 64 megabytes per second. Uh, read latency was pretty good, actually, uh, about six milliseconds. And write latency, not actually that bad for a home lab, right? I mean, this is all flash SSD, but again, consumer grade SSDs. So I was actually surprised it was, it was actually not bad. These, these two sections here are the read 95th percentile latency and the write 95th percentile latency, which basically means 95% of the time my latency was below 17.14 milliseconds, which also means 5% of the time my read latency was above 17.14 milliseconds. And then the same with the write latency here. So 5% of the time, my write latency was higher than 29 milliseconds, essentially, which definitely, you know, there's some spikes there. So if we look down at the data, here's the write latency. Uh, it doesn't actually show it, but again, this is for each VM. It's going to break it out. And this is cumulative up top here, right? So this is all together, and this breaks it out per VM. So you can see, like right here is probably when. Overall, we were over 28 milliseconds, right? So, but pretty good information. So um, here's my block size. And again, that was dictated by the workload parameters that I set. So 4K, 70% read, 100% random. So here's my 4K. Uh, it deployed four VMs, which is what it used. Uh, outstanding IOs, 128, which I think think is also somewhere here. No, I guess not. Um, and then the read ratio 70%, which again was dictated right here, 70%. So this is good data, right? Keep this, save this, don't run it as you actually have production workloads because it's definitely gonna impact those um, because it's, it's really hitting the disks pretty hard. Uh, it shows my Q depth, which didn't change, of course, because I, didn't, I don't have that. That's not a dynamic thing. You just set that and kind of walk away, right? So I guess 32 is the, uh, the default here. Um, that's about it as far as the, the metrics that it collects. Um, the other thing you can do, so if you want to save this for, you want to look at it later, when you go here, back to HCI Bench, you can view the results. And that's going to take you to basically all of the, the files, right? So let's look at this one here. This was one of the tests. Uh, oh, and by the way, it also has 
when you're in configuration and the test is done, you can save the result and it'll download the zip file for you. So you can, you can see it at any time. But you can also go through here, drill down into this one. And then if you click on stats.html, now we have kind of an offline copy of all the performance metrics that we collected during the test, right? So breaks it out per host. So here we can see for ESXi03, here are the full graphs as far as latency, IOPS, bandwidth, and congestion, uh, outstanding IO, st latency standard deviation, and then the client cache hit rate which we won't see any cache hit rate because this is an all flash vSAN config, which means the caching tier is only used for write caching, not read caching. So that's why that's empty. So real quick, Steve, we have a, another question from Francisco uh, in Q&A. He said uh, he's working with a customer on HCI bench. The customer couldn't make heads or tails out of the output. Uh, they couldn't tell what good looked like. Mm. And while it's a great tool, they struggled to tell how many workloads they could forecast. Mm. To use it right and they had to use pso uh, to help out so um any thoughts on how to use hci bench to gauge how many workloads can fit um, in that vsan environment um that's a good question i would you really just kind of need to understand what these numbers mean like i just by doing this for so long i know you know once you get up around 20 milliseconds of latency you're going to start noticing it right so um, it's difficult to forecast though, like how many workloads it could in theory support because every workload is different. Uh, maybe if you were using VROPs and you knew, okay, in this old cluster, which is VMFS, here's my, uh, here's my typical latency. Here's what I'm getting. Here's how many, uh, here's my bandwidth, right? And my throughput, right? And, and average those out and, and maybe somehow extrapolate the data that way. It's a good question. And, and I, I think it's, it's definitely something with, I would need to think about a lot further. I think this is more around, let's just take a benchmark before we start putting production workloads on. And then as we start filling it up with workloads, we can come back to this and see, are we getting what we expected, right? And, and does that look right? And then also, if a customer builds out six different robo vSAN environments and they're all the same hardware and you run this test in each one and one of them looks way different from the others, something's wrong, right? They should all in theory be very similar from a, from a performance perspective. So I think it's more around just kind of setting a baseline. Uh, but I don't know. I think VROPS is probably going to be your best bet as far as, um, capacity management yeah. and uh, predicting, you know, workloads and things like that. So, well, and, and I'll add too, right. It's also understanding the workload because SQL server has a different right size, right? right? 4k versus 8k versus another size. And we know that if you put an 8k on a 4k, you might get two rights, right. Or three operations or whatever else. Right. Um, so understanding the workload that you're going to put on there and then configuring uh, HCI bench to the right test profile, like the ones we saw the quick run that are like the four options, finding the one that's the most appropriate for what you might put on there is going to get you a lot closer. Um, because I, I would hate for you to run like the generic one, uh, and then find that it's all Oracle. Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly. far from generic. And you're like, we bought this thing. We spent a lot of money and it doesn't do what we want. Well, you probably have to tweak it a little bit. Anyway. Yeah. A couple other thoughts, but, that's a good point, right? So you could run this same profile. Uh, I think it was this one here, the third one for databases, right? Um, but then you could create different storage policies and run it over and over to see, okay, am I getting my storage policy the way I want it for the mm -hmm. maximum amount of performance? Even though we're doing the same kind of IO testing, the policy is going to dictate, you know, we've got more threads here or um, we're not doing... I don't know, whatever, right? We can tweak how the policy is. Maybe we're doing erasure coding versus like a, just a mirror policy, something like that. How many, mm -hmm. how many copies of the data we have? So I guess to loop back and answer the question, my take is I don't know there's a way to use this without really understanding 
what the data is that you're going to put on it. And then even then it's never going to come back and say you can run 20 VMs. Right. Yeah. Or 15. So yeah, it's tough. It um, might take a little PSO, but it also could take just a savvy customer who understands some of those concepts. Right. And if you also have a, a storage team, you know, and they live and breathe this stuff every day, um, they might be able to validate, Oh yeah, these are good results, right? What we would expect from our enterprise SAN or something like that or whatever. Um, yeah, it's a good question. So digging more into the results here, just a little bit more. So here's your um, vSAN disks and you have to break it down by host. So you can see here's my four disks. Oh, that's interesting. It marks it as H hard disk drive, not SSD. Huh. Um, but you can tell this one is my, my uh, caching tier because it's got the right buffer. If it was a hybrid config, I would imagine it would also have the read buffer fill here, right? Um, it also has physical CPUs. So it does so, uh, show the CPU usage here. Memory, same thing. Uh, it's honestly, it's so much data. I, I kind of agree with you. It's like, I don't even know what I'm looking at, but at least I've captured it. So now I can do some research, figure out what these things mean and I have the data, you know what I mean? And you could always, you know, open up a support case and they can help kind of um, translate what these things are meaning. So if we click on VMs, this is showing me all my VMs. Uh, these are the four test VMs. So if I click on those, it's gonna break it down into the objects, right? So my VM home, kind of similar to the VMX file. Um, and it shows the, the distributed object manager, UUID. So it breaks it down by, by each one of these. If I look at a VM that was not powered on, I don't get any data, which makes sense, right? So uh, let's find one that was powered on. I think my vCenter was in here. It should have data, yeah. And yeah, I had my vCenter running in this cluster when I did the test and it, would, it definitely, was sluggish, you know, as it was doing it. So just keep that in mind that you don't want to do this live in a production environment to get a baseline. That would be bad. You would feel it. Um, about just shows kind of some high level info about the environment, each host, the disk groups within it, how much memory is CPU, you know, the, the model version of vSphere, all that stuff. And then network, uh, which was interesting because I had a considerable amount of uh, errors. Where was that? Yeah, the VM, VM kernel NIC errors. At one point it really spiked, so something happened. There are a lot of uh, retransmits, so I'll have to look at that. But that is pretty much it. I mean, we're getting close to the end of the hour here. Uh, does anyone have any comments or questions? Oh, we have one in the Q&A. Uh, Xavier asked, is there any documentation on the graphs? Uh, recommended values, you know, whatever. Yeah, I couldn't find any. Um, when I look at the documentation, it's really about how to deploy it, how to use it, uh, but it doesn't dig into the results really at all. I think they just kind of assume that you know what these storage values mean, right? So no, I couldn't find anything, at least in this documentation. If we look here, there's probably yeah. a lot of comments that talk about the results. Like here's one right here. Uh, and it points back to the community site. So now one thing I did notice though, in the results um, at the top uh, with like, you know, told you what your IOs is like 30, 63.9. There you go. So mm -hmm. we start seeing some coloring here where we have orange and red and green. So that might imply, oh, yeah. um, you know, some level of, is this good or bad? Um, yeah. yeah. Hard Good to point. say. Yeah, it, you're right. It does have some thresholds for those colors. It's just the question is, what are the thresholds? But, yeah. Um, Let me reset my time here. All right, so here's the two tests. Let's look at the second one. Um, also, when you're doing your config, you, 
specify freedoms. So that way it doesn't have to redeploy every time you want to do the same test. Oh, okay. maybe a different storage policy, right? Um, because it, like I said, it has to prep those disks and write data to all of them so you don't get that first write hit. So if you can reuse, definitely do that. Because that took a while to prep the disks. And it was like, I showed you the, the performance in VROPS. It was pretty bad write latency. So my, uh, my write cache is definitely not a high performance SSD and it, it probably should be bigger. It's only 250 gigs. So. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Uh, Xavier also asked, recommended is one P VM per host or more? So I didn't have to think about it. I did the easy run. And when you choose one of these out of the box workload profiles, it determines that for you. If you turn that off, you can get extremely granular and specify the number of VMs. Um, but I don't, I don't know if the documentation, I didn't read that part. If, uh, there's any guidelines as far as why you would use one versus four versus, you know what I mean? I don't know. So I feel like if you don't really understand a whole lot around IO testing, make your life easy. Just use the easy button and pick one and it'll do kind of all that stuff for you. And what's good is it'll do it consistently. So if you run this against different environments and you pick the same one, it's going to look, it's going to use the same parameters and variables against each environment. I remember back in the day, like with Iometer, I mean, you can tweak all those things and get an array with like a million IOPS, right? But it's like every vendor was claiming, look, my array can do this. But yeah, you tweak the numbers and you tweak the test scenario so much to get the absolute maximum out of it. And it's not real world, right? Yeah. So that's what these are for. They, they just kind of say, what are you actually going to expect when you start putting workloads on this. Now there was an option there, Steve, on that config page that I thought was interesting that I would monkey around with is that a clear read write cache before each test case. Yeah. Um, and we talked about that a little bit, but basically it's just going to SSH into your host, which mm -hmm. you have to have turned on and it's going to flush that, that read and write cache. Uh, for me, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference oh, yeah. because I'm not doing any read caching since it's all flash but it might make sense for a hybrid config where you just want to flush that. And that way the data that it gets is brand new every time well, right, and, for each test, right? Yeah, and anytime, regardless of vCN or not, if you have any kind of storage with any kind of caching, you want to try and exhaust that cache so you can see what's the performance like after the cache is gone. Um, because if you run a test for five minutes and it looks great, well, that's not indicative of running it for two years. Yeah. Um, and you want to exactly. see what that performance drop looks like. So yeah. watching it heat up and then crash um, might be a good thing too. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I guess back to, I want to say it was Francisco's question around um, using this data to help kind of do some um, environment planning as far as workloads and things like that. Um, I would, Definitely check out the comments here on the Fling page. I'm sure people have asked those same kind, kind of questions, right? There's a lot of comments here. Um, I'm assuming a lot of them will point you back to some threads in the VMware communities. So there's probably some really good discussion around that. Also, if you don't have Slack, check out Slack and go into code.vmware.com. I haven't checked, but I would imagine there's an HCI bench channel in there. And if not, there's obviously a vSAN channel in there, I would imagine. So you may be able to find some resources there that can help explain some of these numbers and help you do some uh, workload forecasting, things like that. So, But at the very least, it's good just for a benchmark, right, before you start putting um, workloads into a new environment. I feel like it's just kind of making sure you do your, your homework and Make sure everything looks good before you start putting in real world stuff in there. Oh, that comment you have up on your screen right now, or the question, the comment from Charles Lee is really interesting too. Just talking about if your workload is fits within the cache, then uh -huh. it's gonna be served in the same tier. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of value just here on the Fling site. Absolutely. That's cool.
spent a week reading these and <laughs> I've never been really deep in storage as far as uh, understanding, you know, how to tweak Q depth and all that stuff. I, I typically stayed out of it. So um, yeah, you could definitely, definitely do a lot of optimization with those types of parameters. Cool. Any other questions or thoughts or comments? We're at the top of the hour. Alrighty. Well, thanks for joining everybody. Thank you for doing this, Steve. This is great. Yeah. I mean, I was doing it for my customer anyway, so I figured why not share the love, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks everyone and have a good rest of your week and a good weekend. Perfect. All right. Take care. Take the survey, everybody. Thanks, Steve.